Hey guys, my name is Pedron, and I'm a professional practice assistant professor in finance. I'm also a CFA charter holder. This is another episode of my crash course in machine learning concept, Simply Explained. Part 9 is a very exciting one. In this episode, we will see how do machines actually learn and what do we mean by that. In the previous parts, we talked about what is machine learning. What are the machine learning models and what are the solvers, the optimizers? Specifically in part two, we said that a machine learning algorithm learned complex patterns in high dimensional space without being specifically directed. This last part, the without being directed, does not mean that the computers or the machines will learn the pattern in the data out of nowhere. Actually, this is us, the humans, who set the algorithms, the rules, and after that, the machine is free to play by rules without being specifically directed, okay? So a very good example is, think of a soccer game, right? The rules and positions are set. We know the rules, you know, we know the positions, there's a goalie, there's defend, attack, and etc. right? And the goal is to score without being specifically directed, without being specifically told how. All right. So how do machines learn? The short answer is by algorithms. An algorithm is a process or set of rules to be followed by computers in calculations or other problem solving operations, right? Generally speaking, the more data a machine learning algorithm is provided with, the more accurate it becomes. In part three, we actually talked about different machine learning algorithms, namely supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. In part four, we covered the definition of, of a machine learning model. We said that the model is what summarizes the relationship between variables, namely the pattern in the data. And the machine is expected to learn that pattern by finding the parameters and hyperparameters of the model. And in part eight, we said that this is done by machine learning solvers, which we covered in that section. We also mentioned that if the model is parametric, then the functional form of the pattern is assumed. And when the model is non-parametric, then we don't impose any functional form. Now let's put all these things together and summarize it in a diagram. All right, starting with the data. Well, we first need to split the data into train set and test set. Then we need to construct our model. Here is where we can think of parametric versus more flexible non-parametrics model. Then the next step is to train the model. For training the model, we need to use the train set and we can start by some initial values for the parameters and hyperparameters of the model, if the model has hyper, any hyperparameters. Then the next is using the model and those initial values for parameters. Uh, we will make some predictions in the test set as well as for the cross-validation set. Later on, we will use these cross-validation predictions for tuning the hyperparameters and comparing the models in general. Next step, now with the predictions in hand, we can calculate the errors and then report some evaluation metrics like RSS, residual sum of score for regression uh, analysis, and accuracy for classification. The next step is it's time to optimize the parameters. This is the part that the solvers will come into play. If the loss function is well behaved, I mean by well behaved we mean continuous and differentiable at any point, then we can use any of the gradient descent solvers or their updates, right? The stochastic gradient descents, Adam, Adam, uh, Adam, and etc. Also, if there is a close from analytical solution for the optimization problem, like in simple linear regression models, we don't even need to use gradient descent. We can simply find the optimal parameters by using closed form solution formula, right? After optimization, it is time to update the parameters of the model. This is the learning part where the model learn the pattern, right? So the, basically by learning the pattern, mean, we mean that learning the bias and the weights, right? 
then if the model has any hyperparameters, then the hyperparameters will also be updated and optimized using cross-validation, grid search, or even gradient descent for continuous hyperparameters. All right, that's it. You know, finally, we know how to, the machines are actually learn. Uh, isn't it exciting? Okay, so what are the next steps? In the future episodes, we will be talking about the specific machine learning models. And for each model, we will be talking about what is a loss function and what kind of solver or optimizer it is used in that specific model. So stay with me in this beautiful and exciting journey of machine learning models and their applications in economics and finance. So let's wrap up this episode by going over the question of the day. I want you to think about how does the previous diagram look like for linear regression model? I guess we're all familiar with linear regression model, right? So how does it look like? How does the diagram look like for that? You can write down your answers in the comment section. Until then, take care and see you in the next one.